We're going to talk about the Doppler shift of light now. This is a complex topic in astronomy, but it's one that's very important to help us understand how we analyze the light that we get from stars and other objects. So the Doppler effect is the change in wavelength that we receive from some source that is due to the relative motion between the source of that light and the observer along a line of sight. Now that's the uh, book definition, but let's talk about what it means in practice. If I've got a source that is uh, stationary, that is it's not moving with respect to me, and it's giving off some waves or it's giving off some light, then if I'm standing and receiving those waves or that light, then I'll just get whatever wavelength it's originally giving off, as long as it's not moving relative to me. However, if it begins moving towards me, or I begin moving towards it, then the spacing between the waves that I receive will have an apparent change. And so if it's moving towards me, then the spacing will actually be smaller than they normally would. And so I would experience what's called a, uh, a blue shift, which is a Doppler shift. And if the object was moving away from me and still emitting that light, then the spacing would spread out. And that would be uh, apparent longer wavelengths to me. And in, the, and in Doppler shift, that's called a red shift. Let me show you what that means with a simulation. So what I'm going to show you here is a source and an observer. There's going to be a wave emitted by the source and then a wave received by the observer. And we'll see this in the simulation. So the top wave will be the one that's emitted by the source and then the waves as detected by the observer will be on the uh, bottom uh, row. I'll be able to control the rate how fast the waves are being emitted, and also whether or not the source and the observer are moving towards or away from each other, or if they're stationary. So let's go to the simulation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start emission. And so the source will begin giving off waves, and they can be sound waves, water waves, or light waves. And I'm going to keep the source and the observer stationary relative to each other. So the waves are now being emitted, and we can see the waves as emitted from the source. They're all the same wavelength being continuously emitted. And I'm going to pause the simulation now. The waves are just being uh, received by the observer. If there's no relative motion between the source and the observer, then what we should expect is that the waves received or detected by the observer are the same wavelength as those given off by the source. So I'm going to resume the simulation and see if that's what happens. And indeed, if we compare the top waves, that is, the waves as emitted by the source, compared to the waves as detected by the observer, they are identical. There's no change in the apparent wavelength detected by the observer. So I'm going to stop the emission so that the last of the waves emitted by the source pass by the observer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the source move towards the observer while emitting the waves. And we're going to see how, if at all, the waves detected by the observer change. So let's start the emission again. And what I'm going to do is take the source and move it towards the observer. And it's going to move at a fairly constant speed towards the observer. And during that time that the source is moving towards the observer, notice how it's moving towards the waves it already emitted. I'm going to pause the simulation here. During that time that it was moving towards the waves it already admitted, uh, emitted, from the viewpoint of the observer, the distance between those waves was shorter. And so the relative motion between the source and the observer caused uh, 
the waves detected by the observer to be apparently shorter than they normally would be when they were emitted by the source. So notice that the difference between the waves emitted from the source are up here and the waves detected by the observer during that time when the source is moving towards the observer, they are shorter wavelength. All right, I'm gonna resume the simulation. The source and the observer are stationary and so the waves are back to normal. They're both identical now, emitted and detected at the observer. But now I'm going to take the source and move it away from the observer. Watch what happens here. The source will move away from the waves it had already emitted, which means the distance between each wave is going to stretch out. And what that means for the observer is, is that the waves detected by the observer are going to appear to be longer wavelength. And so I'm going to take the source and move the source away from the observer. And while the source is moving away from the observer, the apparent distance between those waves is longer than they would be if the source was not moving. So notice how the waves detected by the observer are longer wavelength than the ones emitted by the source. So I'll pause the simulation so that we can see this difference. Here's the waves as emitted by the source. This is what you would receive if there was no relative motion between the two. But because the source was moving away, the observer detects apparently longer wavelengths. All right, I'll resume the simulation. So we'll get back to normal with no relative motion between the two. So the source is the, th is the one that's giving off these waves. But I can get the same Doppler effect, that is the change in the waves detected by the observer, even if the source is not moving towards or away from the observer. The observer could be moving towards or away from the source. Let me show you that. I'm going to have the observer move towards the source. And as the observer moves towards the source, the apparent distance between waves becomes shorter. And we can see that in the difference between the two uh, waves above. So I'll pause the simulation. So during the time that the observer was moving towards the source, the waves it's detected are shorter wavelength than those emitted by the source. Resume simulation. And then I'm going to take the observer and move them away from the source of the waves. And during that time, you can probably guess now, the apparent wavelengths are going to be longer. And we can see that in the difference between the waves emitted by the source and the waves detected by the observer above. And now they're back to normal because there's no relative motion between the source and the observer in the end. So this is the cause of this Doppler shift for waves. This happens with sound waves, water waves, light waves, any type of waves. And it's not that the source or the it's not that the source is giving off shorter wavelengths or longer wavelengths. It has to do with the detection of those waves. It's an apparent shorter wavelength, an apparent longer wavelength because of that relative motion. Notice that it has to be relative motion towards or away. If we're moving side to side, we're not really going to get much of a difference. And I'll show that to you here. If I move side to side, there's not going to be much of a difference. As we can see, if I'm moving side to side, not towards or away, the wavelengths don't really change between the source emitted and those detected.